It is on us. It is our responsibility and duty to produce local and indigenous picture storybooks for children that depict our culture and tradition, that use the likeness of our children, our phenotype, and our surrounding. When children see their likeness in books and on television, it gives a sense of acceptance and the confidence of being enough. It always gladdens my heart when children interrupt me when I'm reading any of my books and they exclaim, my name is Dara, my brother is Ike, my friend is Tishefumi or Suraj. They can relate to the story. It is easier for them to read and understand because, of course, it is their reality. While foreign books, stories and heroes are not bad, reading them alone is insufficient for our children how do they learn that they are enough when they don't read books that reflect them? There is so much to do as it relates to picture story books for children zero to seven, seven years in Nigeria. Every topic that relates to children must be depicted in picture story books for this group of readers. Corporate bodies must step forward to assist authors of picture story books. Literacy award organizers must create a category for authors of picture story books so as to promote this art. The government must provide indigenous picture story books for public libraries and schools. Well-meaning individuals should consciously support younger readers and initiative for this age of readers. The media must advocate for support for this class of readers. Schools should insist on more indigenous picture story books now more than ever since we have contemporarily well-done picture storybooks. Book vendors should stock indigenous picture storybooks and tell their customers about the importance of these books. Literacy competition organizers should allocate a slot for authors and illustrators of picture storybooks that carry the Nigerian undertone. How then can you expect a 10-year-old to magically become a reader when he or she has not been reading since he was one or two years old? It is not magic. It must be taught to be inherent in a child to read. That is how to groom readers. It is not shocking that Nigerian authors are not selling thousands or hundreds of thousands of books. They cannot because we have not taught children to read. So, who will buy the books you are writing? Not foreigners, of course. They have their own books to digest. We must create our own reading generation. People call to ask, is it true that you have sold over 12,000 copies of your books in two years? The answer is yes. The children are hungry for the stories that affect them, for the pictures that show their reality. So we must keep this up. Imagine my current readers in 15, 20 years time. They will be parents and they will gladly buy my books for their own children because it is inherent in them. Another issue we must discuss is getting these books to less privileged children and children in public schools. The government can do so much here if they can provide these quality picture story books to children from disadvantaged backgrounds. It will go a long way in restating that they are loved and that they matter to the society. Apt. Very, 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 very apt. Um, first off, I'm hearing for the first time that you sold about 12,000 copies uh, of your book. Yes, yeah, true. Well, so, um, big ups. Big Thank ups, you. Big ups and they say a picture is worth a thousand, a thousand words. words. Yes, of course. Uh, as I was saying, the part of it that struck me has to do with uh, decolonizing, decolonizing our educational system. True. You see, the tendency to uh, depict um, impressions or images or information uh, with foreign, um, foreign characters goes to how this back to our colonial system. It's, it means that over 60 years after our colonial masters left us, um, uh, we still continue to exhibit um, and, and a, a, a hangover of, of colonialism or colonial instincts, so much that we have now fused it into our educational system. And that's the worst place you can ever fuse it, because that's where, you, that's the, that's where the, ch the child becomes socialized after the family. Most families are so busy these days, and they push that responsibility to the schools. And if children are exposed to an educational background where their, 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 their nationalistic psyche is shaped by foreign uh, images, 
then it really affects that sense of nationalism which we ought to build. And of course, one, another thing that is very common, I don't know if you have had this kind of experience, is you go to a bookstore and you want to pick up a book, and for a child, of course, and all the picture story books, I'm particular for ages zero to seven, ages zero to seven, and mm -hmm. they tell you that, oh, we don't have, um, we, don't, we don't stock, we don't stock Nigerian authors. And I'm mortified because I'm looking at the young man that is saying that, and I'm thinking in my mind, have you traveled around the world? Do you know that the white man would definitely stock his own books on his shelf? So why are you telling me that you're not stocking um, Nigerian picture story books? Yeah. But I must say that it's a new, it's a new breed of authors that we have now. And it's something that we all need to key into. Comfort, what, what do you think about keying into this kind of um, initiative? Uh, I think it, it goes back to what um, uh, Mr. Raymond said about um, colonialism. I, I don't know, for some funny reason, we moved, suddenly moved from what we understood, understand, to what we don't understand. And that's what we've imbibed in our lives. Growing up, um, we still used to sit down when there was no light and we'll be told stories. I'm guilty. I grew up and now I started doing the bedtime story nonsense, lying high in the bed, talking them in, uh, sitting down. That was not how it was. And then speaking in English. So the second point here is that going with your title, it is on us. How many parents read? How many parents have, have the culture of having a home library? How many parents actually take the time to tell their, their children the indigenous story stories that they grew up knowing. And let's be honest, they are, they, the percentage is negligible. And so when you go into the store and the store man says, we do not stop that, it's because of the reactions he's also been getting from his customers, who, number one, will totally ignore the books, or if he offers the books or, um, to the parent, they say, please, 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 I'm looking for Mallory Towers. Give me any Python, you know, <laughs> give me, the, you know, they call all the Oibo ones because uh, that's the one that they know. And so, uh, again, I think your topic for me is apt. The, the, the tagline is apt. It is on us. These children come to us blank slates. It's what we write on, the, on their hearts. It's what we write into their lives that they end up imbibing. Why have we lost it? What happened? And going back to the indigenous languages, I, 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 it would be lovely to see a awakening of that because I'm surprised. Um, um, growing up, my, I didn't learn English per se at home. You know, it was in school because that was it was deliberate. You learned the language in the house first, and then you go and learn English as um, uh, as the, the secondary, which I tried to do in my own in my own home. I mean, it was a bit tough because everywhere everybody's speaking English, even those that can't speak the English. So it, 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 it became a challenge. And so, you know, going forward, it, it's still the issue of being deliberate. How do we get a reading culture in the schools? You know, the, just not just the reading clubs, the children who are gifted, how are they being, you know, extracted? You know, how are they being encouraged to, you know, continue on that path? Because they'll become the next generation authors. And so if there isn't that deliberate uh, um, action from the home, it is on us and the schools uh, to take them to the next level, then we're still going to have a death at the well, end of well, the speaking day. About, speaking about deliberate um, effort uh, to bring about a different outcome. Um, um, you talked about how the government and the corporate organizations can actually play in that space. And I think I actually agree with you because um, I remember those days when we were, we were growing on primary secondary school, we have um, the certain, certain books we are recommended to us. When our parents come to get a list of books, there are some books that they are meant to buy. So I think a way to address this issue is to putting indigenous children storybooks in the list in the curricula of schools so that parents will be forced to get them so I, that I, those I, children I, I'm sure. will read them. And also corporate organizations and NGOs who support educational courses can also dedicate... But if, if I become, come in there, I'm sure that there are indigenous books in school curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now the issue that we might have is what are the quality of the books in the school curriculum because you might find that uh, well for children books how much quality we, 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 but, yeah, but, but, I, yeah, Amone has a point because, because true they are available but you will realize that the gap 
is for ages 0 to 7. Okay. So if you get to a primary one, for example, where you have a six-year-old, seven-year-old, they have yeah. storybooks. Okay. But for, but for very, zero to very... seven, they don't have storybooks that depict our culture. And that is where we need to enhance them. For corporate organizations, mm -hmm. most of them support literacy, support authors. They will tell you there is a, there is a, um, there is a competition a literacy award that authors should send in books that were published in a particular year. I'm not going to name a name now, but I knew that my book was not going to be selected because that age group of readers are neglected. So I submitted my book nevertheless. The names came out for the authors that won that category. Beautiful stories, beautiful titles, Nigerian authors, but of course the focus was ages eight and above. There are more like children novels, not picture storybooks that you can show a one-year-old. Just before now, I was coming from an event and my books were on display and you had 10-year-olds coming to pick my storybooks. And I'm sitting there and I'm telling her that, darling, that book is too little for you. It's for younger readers. And she busted into tears. Well, all right. I think um, with that, you seem to be you are the heart of uh, solving this problem. But in any event, I think we've come to the end of um, this segment of um, of, of, of the program. After the break, Omoni is highlighting the importance of mentorship. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 